I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit funky today. I've been in a bit of a rush, but honestly, just count your blessings that the Antichrist took the time out of her day to share this anti-haul with you. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm the spawn of Satan. Super good to meet you if you're new here. Most people though are not new here because this is my second channel. This is where I talk about physical media and where I vlog. But over on my main channel, my horror channel, most people already know what's up. Now that you do too, if you would like to join our cult, all you have to do is click subscribe. You can find that button just right down below. And then also, I recommend clicking the like button and the notification bell that way you never miss our next meeting. In today's meeting, I think we have the largest anti-haul that I have ever done, which feels really good because this is my first anti-haul of the year. It's January, 2024. So I've got a lot of stuff to get rid of. We're clearing out the old to make way for the new. And that's what the focus of the first half of the stack is gonna be. As you can tell, there's some Friday the 13th stuff to get into because lately I've just been sent a lot of stuff, a lot of upgrades. So that's what I'm gonna go through first. And then we'll get into this large chunk down here of stuff that I watched and just did not deem it good enough to keep. Sometimes this sect of my cult lovingly refers to themselves as the curator cult. Do you have a curator mentality or a more like hoarding collector mentality? Let me know. I always like to ask people that are new to the channel because we all have our different collecting styles. Mine involves getting rid of as much stuff as I can. <laughs> so to kick things off, actually this is the first time I'm talking about a book in an anti-haul. I have like an entire collection of these but I think that as I read them, I'm slowly gonna get rid of them. They're just, they're just not very good. Like they're meant for children and they're not, I'm not really the audience. So that's number one. I don't know, I might start doing books in my anti-hauls, like stuff that I read that I don't hold on to just because they take up so much space and I don't have literally any type of shelf for that. And also because I just brought so many new books into my life and so many new ones have been sent to me. So I also need to keep that collection clear. And it's also a form of physical media, right? I don't know, let me know if you're on board with that. Next up, Somebody sent me this delightful little copy of Life, but I already own this Blu-ray and I had it in a sleeved edition, so I'm not gonna hold on to this. This actually, I feel like is an underrated movie. It has such a dynamite cast, but I think that it might've just flown a little bit too close to kind of being an alien ripoff. So maybe that's why people don't like it. I don't know. Some lucky person will find this at my local Goodwill. Because also I'm about to send off nine different packages to giveaway winners from December. I had to wait because the holiday shipping rates were so expensive and that kind of broke the bank. I've got a trip that I got to save up for. I have other things I need to save up for, so I can't really afford to be doing giveaways like that, I realized. So I'm so sorry, but I am going to be donating these and some lucky person in my area will get a hold of them. I'm so sorry that they can't go to a cult member, but the shipping, it's insane. So anyway, up next we have Ginger Snaps, which is another title that I already owned. I think I actually had this exact Blu-ray, so just not going to hold on to this one. My local Goodwills, they're about to be just swimming in it. Swimming in the good stuff, you know? including this next one, I'd be gagged if I found this at Goodwill. Like an Arrow Video edition of Robocop that's in great shape. I owned the other Arrow Video edition of this movie, so just no reason to hold on to two of them. Then we also have Hellraiser on Blu-ray, one of my favorites of the 80s. This one I am gonna double check just one more time, but somebody did send me the Arrow Video editions of this movie and the first sequel, so I'm sure that all those same special features from this one are probably on that one. I'm just gonna double check check just to be safe, but probably not going to hold on to this. Same thing with this copy of The Strangers on DVD. I actually own this DVD already, like this exact one, but it's just sleeved. So again, just no reason to hold on to this one. Now we're getting into all of the Friday the 13th stuff that I'm giving up. And it's some really good stuff, but if you were around for one of my last subscriber mail unboxings, then you know that I got the entire package of the franchise. And when you have the entire 12 film Shout Factory Blu-ray collection. You just don't need to hold on to this kind of stuff. I am gonna hold on to my steelbook of Friday the 13th part three. I don't think anything will ever make me part with a single one of my steelbooks. But as for the rest of the DVDs and the Blu-rays, I don't think I need to hold on to them. So one lucky goodwill near me will receive this copy of Freddy vs. Jason on Blu-ray with lots of special features. Again, I will double check that we get all the same special features on the Shout Factory edition as we do on this one, but I'm sure we do because that box comes with an entire separate Blu-ray just of all the special features and a booklet with more information in it too, which I actually have that right here. Somebody sent me this separately to their Shout Factory collection. I don't know why they wouldn't want to hold on to this, but I have the bonus material here and then the little booklet here. So not going to be holding on to this either because now I have two of them. Just wouldn't really make much sense to hold on to these, but I do wish that I had a better way to like package these up to give them away because I don't know if Goodwill would hold on to something like this or if they 
they would toss it in favor of just selling this. I don't know. Up next, there is this eight movie collection. It's the first eight movies, but it's missing the fourth disc. So part seven and eight are not actually in this collection. Somebody sent this to me. And I really like these collections. I have another one of them that has the first four movies in it. And even when I was sent this, like I couldn't really bear to part with this because I thought that this was just so cute. It's this really nice kind of like heavy sleeved DVD edition. And it's got the first four movies on there. And I'm pretty sure it comes with like a ton of special features too. And the first one is uncut. So again, I'm just gonna double check that we get the uncut version on the Shout Factory Blu-ray as well. Otherwise, I will definitely hold on to this. Maybe that's why I held on to it when I got this one because I don't think that this one, this is uncut actually, Never mind. Probably saying goodbye to these collections here. I might have to hold on to this one because oh, with the lights, it's gonna be so hard to see. That's so annoying. But look at this like shifty, cool cover for part seven. And I love part seven. I'm pretty sure that this one is still like my third favorite of the entire franchise. And that's just such a cool cover. Like, I don't think I can give that up. I didn't realize this was in this stack. I just pulled out my entire Friday collection because I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna replace all of them. But this is way too cool. I mean, this has to be like a display piece or something. So actually, we're not gonna get rid of this one. You get to live there with me forever. Three more to go though. I do have these DVDs of the more recent Friday the 13th films. Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, and of course the remake from 2009. There are a lot of special features on these editions of Jason X and Jason Goes to Hell. So again, I'll double check, but I probably won't be hanging on to any of these. Some horror fan in the area is about to get this whole collection and they're just gonna be the luckiest boy in school. These next two again are just movies that I already had. I need to double check that the steel book that I have of this one does indeed have the theatrical cut of The Exorcist on it because the steel book I have has the director's cut on it, which I've actually never seen. And I just need to make sure that it also has the theatrical cut. Otherwise I will be holding on to this. Although why does this say the version you've never seen? That would lead me to believe that this is also a director's cut. It doesn't say anywhere that it's a director's cut. So I have no idea why this says the version you've never seen. Not a clue. Anyways, this next one I definitely don't need to hold on to. This is The Poltergeist from 1982. I have this movie on Blu-ray and will probably always prefer to watch it in a higher quality. It is my favorite horror movie of the 1980s. And I do love a good clippy DVD, but I just don't need it. Painful to admit, if you couldn't tell. It's just something about the index being inside the DVD case. I don't know why I like that so much. It's just so nostalgic. But anyway, that does it for all the movies that I have upgraded lately. Now let's get into the stuff that I just didn't want to keep. Now, I'm not entirely proud of this, but the story for probably like six or seven of these movies goes a little something like this. It was the day before I was leaving to go back home for the holidays and visit my family. I have been dealing with quite a lot of like personal stuff that I am not going to get into here, but I just needed like one last day of indulgence before I had to kind of like rein it in to be around the folks. I didn't really drink at all over Christmas because the day before I left, I had a few drinks. I ate half an edible, but that day I was like, I just want to indulge. I want to watch as many movies as I can and just lay around because I had done a lot of prep work to like be able to go home for the holidays and get stuff out on time. Anyways, so I threw on so many movies just hoping that one would stick and like not a single one of them did. So I'm just going to try to pick out all the movies that I tried to watch that day. Okay. Yeah. I think that it was these seven. <laughs> That's too many. That's not great, but let's go through them. First off, we have Big Bad Wolves. This was apparently touted as one of the best of the year by Quentin Tarantino. I just was not in the headspace to really even know what was going on. I realized pretty quickly that it was definitely like a Tarantino-esque film and that I just was not going to find it that entertaining. It sort of reminded me a little bit of Reservoir Dogs, which I also tried to watch recently with my dad and neither of us really got into that. I am going to try that one again though. This had a similar kind of vibe to it, which is just not the type of movie for me. So nothing really against this movie, but I just couldn't get into it. This movie, however, <laughs> Cruel Intentions was a movie that I was excited to finally see because it's supposedly kind of iconic. Like it's definitely a 90s time capsule, especially just given the actors that are involved and the weird salacious plot line of it. This is such a weird film. This is not for me. It never was. It never will be. I was thinking it would be of a similar 
undertone to something like Clueless or Mean Girls, just maybe a little bit sexier or something. But it was not fun. It was not entertaining. It was just weird. It was so weird. So that one's not for me. That one's going back to Goodwill. Still with the sticker on it. Dance Macabre. I think that this was probably the first one that I tried to watch that day, or maybe that I watched this the day before. I don't remember. This is a little weird indie Robert England film here. And it's basically just a way worse version of Suspiria. And there's a twist that you can see coming in the movie from the very beginning. And it has to do with Robert England having one of the most recognizable faces, even under prosthetics. So having said that, um, I've definitely just ruined this movie for you. But as soon as I turned it off when I realized the twist and that it just wasn't a good movie, I went on Letterboxd and everyone was saying the same thing. So I really don't think I ruined it for you. I think that almost anyone that watches this is going to see it coming. It's, it's quite ridiculous. So yeah, I didn't finish that one. Didn't find that worth it. Next up was a horror pack movie and that would be Nazi Undead. This was, I think, in the December box. And I threw this on almost immediately because I just knew that it was going to be bad. Horror Pack had a really weak month. And I also watched another one from that month as well that's in this anti haul. But that one wasn't part of my indulgence day. Let me just pull it up though, anyways. It's called Kill Her Goats. And I also just recently showed this one off. So you probably don't need to see it again. Something that I didn't even mention about this movie when I unboxed it was that it stars Kane Hodder. And that's supposed to be like the main draw of the movie, but he didn't save it. Nope, no, he didn't. I guess she was the lead character. She showed up to this lake house and she was just wandering around for what felt like forever. So then eventually I just started skipping ahead. I got like 25 minutes into the movie or something and then I started skipping ahead and I skipped ahead several scenes and this girl was still walking around the house. And at that point, I just knew immediately, I was like, I'm never gonna watch this again. Like, absolutely not. So even though it is this really cool kind of like sleeved, Blu-ray situation. It's pretty unique packaging. I just, I don't want to hold on to it. I am going to keep the sticker though that has this artwork on it. But yeah, bye bye Back to my indulgence day, we have Darkness Falls. <laughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to bad movies. Honestly, I couldn't really tell you a single thing about this movie. I think I was a little bit too intoxicated at this point to really tell you what was going on. But if I had to guess, this might have been when I was about elbow deep in my bag of Taco Bell. And then I might have noticed that this was just super, super low quality. And by the looks of it, I just knew that I wouldn't get into it. So we're not keeping it, but that's fine. You know, I bought this from Goodwill for $3. It's just like renting something. And sometimes you rent something and you don't like it. So no harm, no foul. Twill be donated back. Now these last two are really upsetting. These were some of the first that I tried to watch because I had the highest hopes for them. Starting with Nine, which I talked to you guys about very recently. And I even got some comments under that video talking about how good this movie was. And that's what I was hoping for. But very soon after I turned it on, I was like, ooh, no, actually not. I hate this animation style, whatever it is. I don't know if it's the same like motion CGI capture as something like Monster House or something, no idea. Whatever type of animation this is, it's also kind of similar to Polar Express. I don't like it. It is so disconcerting to me. I think it's so ugly. I couldn't get into it for that reason, but also because it was pretty much like as weird as it looks. I know that I already just held this up for you a couple of weeks ago, but just take a gander. Like it's so, it's so bizarre. Like the, this whole aesthetic and everything. I was so bummed because it was a movie that I was too scared to watch when I was a kid when it came out. Also because it's PG-13, so like I couldn't. I just had higher hopes because I built it up in my head. Same thing with the most heartbreaking DVD that I am getting rid of. This upsets me greatly. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. This was a movie that I had dreamed of watching since I was like 12 years old because it just, even at that time when I was like 12, I was like, that sounds so fucking dumb, sign me up. I wanted it in my life for the longest time. And then I put it on and then I'm watching it and I'm trying to get through it and it's so boring. And it's like, how dare? How dare you make a movie called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter and make it boring? How could you? So then I ended up fast forwarding to the final act of the movie, like the climax. So about the last 20 minutes or so. And I watched that all the way through. There's like this sort of explosive fiery climax of him fighting a vampire on a train. And that just looked so bad with the shitty like 2011 CGI or whenever this came out. So I couldn't even really enjoy that because it just looked so bad. It was not fun. I had a terrible time. I skipped around, didn't watch the whole thing. That was 
probably the biggest disappointment of the entire month. Now, lastly, we have two more Blu-rays that I'm not holding on to. This first one, I think was another horror pack exclusive, or if not, then a subscriber sent this to me. Pretty sure that it was a horror pack exclusive though, because it's one of those kind of like underrated, it's got big stars in it. It seems like it would have been something that you missed, but really you weren't missing out on anything. I love the actors in this movie, most of all Kevin Bacon, but this just wasn't a good time. It was a very straight edge, just played very, very straight type of thriller. Too grounded, too realistic, not fun, not my kind of movie. And then finally, I like to end by pissing people off. So we have National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I know that this is probably a lot of your favorites because I know that I have some, some older gentlemen in my audience, but you know who's not gonna watch a movie again that features Chevy Chase getting all flustered staring at a woman's boobs? This girl, this little spawn of Satan right here. I couldn't finish this because I watched like a half hour of it and did not laugh one time. Also, Chevy Chase is just a menace. Like he's just, I don't know, not somebody that I wanna watch anyways. So no big loss here for me. Though it does look that way. What a hefty anti haul. I think I said this in my last one, but I think that this one definitely is for sure the biggest anti haul I've ever done. Because typically I'm not getting rid of stuff that I'm replacing. Like I'll save that for a giveaway or something, but not this time, baby, we're saving the money. If you enjoyed this content, then I do hope that you click subscribe and stick around. Or if not, but you like horror content, then check out my other channel. And if you want even more bonus content from me, then check out my Patreon. Those are the lovely names that you see scrolling on screen right now. You can join them if you so wish. Everything you need is linked down below. But more than anything, I just hope that you enjoyed this video and that I catch you in the next one. Bye!